practically clear from a field perspective. And whenever arms are available in large quantities, well, this is bad news for the civilians. La cartouche. <rire> Les cartouches. Oui. oui. Ça tire. Oui. Beaucoup. En tout cas, il a. Vote is as follows. In favor, 154. Against, 3. Abstain, 23. Draft resolution A slash 67 slash L58 is adopted. It was a strong vote. 154 uh, nation states voted yes, that's a strong vote. I would have obviously preferred a consensus outcome if we'd been able to get one, but I'm very pleased to see the Arms Trade Treaty has been adopted. The Arms Trade Treaty is a truly historic development. For the first time ever, states have agreed to international controls on their transfers of conventional weapons. Moreover, they've done so for a humanitarian purpose, that of reducing human suffering. Well, the next step is obviously in relation to um, it coming into force. We have to get 50, 50 states uh, to, uh, to sign and ratify, and then the treaty comes into force, and then the process of implementation begins, and that's going to be crucial. Seventy-five percent of the weapons are produced by the UN Security Council permanent members. This is Russia, China, the US, UK, and France. There's also emerging powerhouse states which are getting into the arms race. If there's not a arms trade treaty put in place, there'll be fierce competition, there'll be an arms race, and it'll be catastrophic for millions of people around the globe. We maintain that there is a basis for legal trade. There are lots of responsible governments around the world whose defense forces need to update or replace their material from time to time. The treaty says that a state shall not authorize the transfer of weapons if it knows that these weapons would be used to commit genocide, crimes against humanity, or war crimes. The treaty also says that even if a state does not know for sure that the weapons would be used to commit these crimes, it must assess the risk that they could be used to commit serious violations of international humanitarian law or of human rights law. If an overriding risk of such serious violations exists, the arms export must be denied. When we do an assessment, we are looking at a whole set of criteria and we're trying to figure out what the situation is in the country, what it may be like in the future. We need to be ahead of the curve, so to speak, when we take decisions on exports. What this all really argues for is an extraordinary degree of caution in exporting arms uh, in the legal trade. Governments by now should learn the lesson of blowback, that legal weapons they provide can swiftly be fed into the illegal market and can destabilize entire regions, destroy communities, and work counter to the very national security goals that were the original reason for weapons were sent to these areas. The treaty regulates the transfer of small arms and light weapons, such as assault rifles or portable rocket launchers, as well as major categories of conventional weapons, such as attack helicopters or combat vehicles. The key rules of the treaty also apply to ammunition, munitions, and the parts and components of conventional weapons. So the broad scope of the treaty can effectively curb the widespread availability of weapons which is at the source of so much human suffering. There are huge stocks of weapons already in place in sensitive areas where, where there is a risk of conflict and so on. Those weapons 
are only activated if there is a supply of ammunition. And for that reason, it is extremely important that ammunition is regulated in the same way as we want to regulate small arms. We have seen the Arab Spring, we have seen youth demonstration for their freedom. And on television screens I could see arms, um, Dutch arms, uh, uh, armoured vehicles, tanks that were uh, exported in the past. Without seriously thinking about what the risk, the human rights risk, being involved with those exports. For decades, governments have provided weapons to other states which have a very poor human rights record. We've seen those same weapons turned against peaceful protesters during the Arab Spring. Governments should have been far more responsible and have thought through the consequences of those weapons transfers to these areas. Libya is a good example. It has triggered soul searching in exporting countries as to the consequences of legal exports. It has also provided a very good example of the damage that can be done through illegal flows. A lot of weapons have leaked out of Libya to hotspots in the region. The crisis Libyan, you have seen a bit the correlation in the time. It's not too late that there was the crisis in Mali. Et nous savons que cette crise au Mali est alimentée par l'afflux des armes qui proviennent des théâtres libyens. Tout le monde a, a été éparpillé, tout le monde a fui. Le vrai changement de, de, de notre vie quand on est arrivé ici, c'est de ne plus entendre les bruits d'un fusil. Ça, c'est le premier changement. When you are caught in a conflict, it's all about fear. It's all about the humiliation of not being able to protect your own. In some places, you can be killed in your bed. And sometimes you can witness your own daughter being raped. And the lucky ones, are the ones who can flee their homes, their villages, basically with, with nothing and fleeing into the, the wilderness and trying to survive and look for a better place for, for themselves and for their families. The high prevalence or presence of, uh, of small arms in the wrong hands also, of course, prevents humanitarian operators to come and, and, and support the, the victims of this situation. By adopting this treaty, states have made a promise to civilian populations that action will be taken. So governments must now sign, ratify, and implement the treaty this means setting up national systems to control the trade in conventional weapons. It is definitely high time now to establish a solid, realistic, enforceable legal framework that makes sure that the international community at large does not irresponsibly continue to sell and transfer weapons into places and into hands in violations of human rights, in violations of international humanitarian law, 
and in war crimes. Tout est une question de volonté, de volonté des États. Est-ce que nous voulons un monde plus sûr Est-ce que nous voulons un monde plus stable Il n'y a pas, il n'y a pas. Je suis à Vita, Barikimbia Kabot. La mort, il y a pas de Kibumba, Hakuna Kalisi. C'est la guerre qui fait comme ça. À cause de la guerre, les gens ont fui. Tout gagne. 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 T